You are probably aware that the sea level is rising, but the question in everyone's minds are, how fast, how much, and what does that mean for us, for the planet? Look no further, Honest Cheese is here with the answers. Humans emit greenhouse gases into the air, which trap heat in the atmosphere and cause the Earth to warm. As the temperatures increase, the masses of ice at the poles begin to melt. Now, in normal circumstances, during winter in the North Atlantic and near Antarctica, cold, salty water sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Warmer water comes to the surface and releases its heat into the atmosphere. In Antarctica, this layer of cold, salty water near the bottom of the ocean is called Antarctic bottom water, and in the North Atlantic, it's referred to as North Atlantic deep water, N-A-D-W and A-A-B-W for short. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC for short, connects the Antarctic waters to the North Atlantic. This current has a huge impact on the global climate. While it is strong, it mediates temperatures, warming the east coast of the United States and the west coast of Europe and cooling the western and eastern coasts of Africa and South America, respectively. However, when glaciers melt, a lot of fresh, Cold water is introduced to the surface. Because this water is not salty and therefore less dense, it remains at the surface and disrupts the regular flow. In this case, the surface of the ocean cools, which can result in increased sea ice. The surface cooling is temporary and localized, however. Not only does this interfere with the creation of bottom water, but it also traps warm water beneath the surface, where it is unable to release its thermal energy. This results in increased glacial melt and creates a feedback loop. The disruption occurs at both the Antarctic and North Atlantic and will affect the flow of the AMOC, slowing or even shutting it down. To get a better picture of what the time scale of this looks like and what the results would be, scientists need to study past climate periods with similarities to current levels and take detailed measurements of current conditions. They can use this information to create models that show the possibilities for the future of world climate. Let's start with the past. The Eemian was an interglacial period that ended about 115,000 years ago. The end of the Eemian shared a lot of characteristics with modern times. In fact, the average global temperatures were only a little higher than they are today. Glacial melt disrupted ocean currents, greatly slowing the AMOC, which caused a big uptick in severe storms due to more extreme temperature differences and rising sea levels. Research on the climate during the period points to enormous boulders deposited on shorelines in the affected areas, as well as other erosional signs of ancient storms. The pattern eventually resulted in increased glaciation. Currently, temperatures and glacial melt are occurring at a much faster rate today than in ancient times. And, based on the study of ongoing trends of glacial melt in places like the Antarctic, some scientists are predicting a repeat of the end of the Eemian with increasing severity and frequency of storms before another period of glaciation begins. Of course, we can not only rely on the study of past events, Scientists are monitoring the speed of the AMOC, which is measured in sphere drops. A sphere drop is a million cubic meters of water per second. Since 2004, when humans first started measuring its speed, the AMOC has slowed from 20 sphere drops to just 15. There are no accurate measurements of the current speed before this time, but research based off of ocean surface temperatures suggests that the slowdown started in 1930 and has slowed down faster since 1975 than any other period in the past thousand years. Of course, without hard evidence, we can't be certain and some research says that the AMOC oscillates in speed about every decade, and we need another decade of observations to determine whether or not the current slowdown is part of the natural variance. We have seen changes in the current affect the climate. In the 2009-2010 to season, the AMOC was at its lowest and the result was the coldest year the UK had experienced since 1980. What's more, a spot in the North Atlantic, just south of Greenland, is one of the few spots on Earth that's actually cooling, and that spells trouble for our dear friend the AMOC. So, what exactly are the projections for the future? 
The IPCC, which tends to be more on the conservative end, says that in a worst-case scenario, the AMOC will slow down by as much as 50% by the end of the century, although it could be much, much less, as low as a few percentage points slower. The past transition from a warm period to a glacial one witnessed a 50% slowdown of the AMOC, so such a drastic reduction could definitely have some dramatic results. The IPCC doesn't see this as very likely, though. On the other hand, there are scientists claiming that the IPCC is severely underestimating the risks. Some claim that glacial melt increases exponentially because multiple processes create feedback loops that cause the ice to melt increasingly faster. Models created with this in mind show that the Southern Ocean near Antarctica has a leading role to play in climate change, whereas previous research focuses on the Arctic. These models also predict a major slowing of the AMOC by mid-century, even if global warming is capped to 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The current goal of the UN is to keep global warming to no more than that number, with the goal of capping it at 1.5 degrees. However, current promises by member countries are not enough to meet that target. The same scientists making this claim suggest that if greenhouse gas emissions continue, multimeter sea level rise, and the complete shutdown of the AMOC by the end of the century will be unavoidable. Not all researchers take such a bleak stance. A recent study by the NOAA says that the worst case scenario is a 2.5 meter sea level rise by the end of the century, and the best case scenario is a 0.3 meter rise. Most likely is an increase in sea level of half a meter. The study does acknowledge that more credibility should be given to worst case scenario projections, as there is ever more evidence of instability in the Antarctic ice. Meanwhile, population growth near the coasts is expected to continue. By 2060, it's estimated that no fewer than 1 billion people worldwide will live in low-elevation coastal zones, and currently, most megacities reside in those areas. Asia has the largest percentage of their population in such zones, but North America comes in at second place. Flooding is estimated to be about 25 times more likely in low-lying coastal areas. If the sea level rises just 0.9 meters, 2 million Americans would find their homes inundated with water. At 1.8 meters, 6 million Americans would be displaced. We know for sure that the sea is rising, and that there will be more and more storms and flooding, so maybe it would be a good idea to move to higher ground. As to the extent, that remains to be seen. It's up to us to cut emissions and limit global warming if we don't want to see millions, maybe even a billion, of people's homes go underwater.